Hi, I'm Richard with Daily's Walk Behind Tractors, and I'm going to do a video going over the Walk Behind Tractors uh, from a high level, what is it, and showing some controls. Alright, so I have a BCS 732 here. Can we see it, Cass? Tractor? Not all of it, most of it. Okay. Um, this particular uh, tractor has a 9 horsepower Subaru engine on it. Um, BCS just started offering those recently. It's not even listed on their website, but you can get them with a smaller engine um, and it then also has smaller tires. But so walk behind tractor, what is the walk behind tractor? Um, walk behind tractor is similar to a four wheel tractor. It has a PTO uh, that you can take on and off many different implements and they run via the PTO. It has two wheels, of course. So a two-wheel tractor, a walking tractor, a walk-behind tractor. Of course, you walk behind it. So, uh, okay, so PTO. Well, what's the PTO? Let's take a look at it right quick if I swing this thing around. And you can get a shot. Here's our PTO shaft right down here. Okay, so if we were going to run a tiller, we bolt the tiller on here. Uh, and it, you can bolt implements on and off, or you can use a quick hit system that allows you to get them on and off quicker. If someone was buying a walk behind tractor and only one implement, such as a tiller, well, there's not any real reason to have a quick hitch, uh, depending on the model. And BCS, the larger models, what they call the professional series, they all come with quick hitches included in the price when you, for everything you purchase at the time you purchase the tractor. Um, so here's our PTO shaft. Uh, so if the tractor was running, if we wanted to engage the PTO shaft, we have a separate lever for that. It's right here. And you push it toward the engine or move, pull it toward the engine to engage your PTO and move it away from the engine to disengage your PTO. Okay. Um, so let me put the tractor back up here and let's just take a look at some of the basic um, components of the tractor. <coughs> Well, before I do that, let me back up for a second. So, the two-wheel tractors, uh, in comparison with the four-wheel tractors. So, four-wheel tractors are, are built for, you know, for heavy-duty use. You know, you'll see them in rural areas, sitting out in fields, rusting, still running, running for many decades. Well, the two brands of walk-behind tractors we sell, BCS being one, and uh, Grillo, uh, they are also built to very heavy-duty standards. And there's no reason one should not be able to have... Uh, purchase a walk behind tractor and use it for many decades of use. Uh, you have to perform basic maintenance and uh, taking care of the machine, but um, they are very durable and can last you a very long time. So, the walk behind tractor is a very good alternative to the full wheel tractor um, in the right scale. So, depending on what one's doing, managing small properties, small scale market growing, um, and things like that. So, um, not only is this a, a high-end piece of equipment, but I think it's actually fun to use and walk behind it as opposed to riding on a four-wheel tractor, which is boring. I mean, perhaps once someone gets a four-wheel tractor and does it initially, you know, okay, yay, it's fun. A little bit boring. So anyway, and for those that could use exercise like me, uh, it's a great way to exercise. So in any event, let's take a look at some of the controls, okay? I'm going to... Cass, what's the best way? You want me to swing it around toward you? Yeah. Like this? Okay. And you see the controls? Mm -hmm. And you see my hands at least? So I'm pointing to the control as I point to the controls? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So on this tractor, this is the um, entry level machine in the professional line for BCS. Okay. Um, so we have a little extra control here which would be what you get when you move up into the professional line would be a differential. That's what this lever is, okay? Um, since I just mentioned the differential, let's just talk about it for a moment. What's the differential? Well, that allows the machine to turn very easily. The wheels can freewheel and move independently of each other. For those that have used almost any typical American tiller, um, no knock on uh, American stuff, I am an American, uh, by the way. So, um, but what most anyone's used to is a machine that has a straight axle and the wheels are going to bind when you turn. So at the end of your row, if you're tilling, you pretty much have to muscle machine, flip it around, and make your turn. Well, not so with a machine that hits a differential. So notice, um, I don't know if you can see, you might have to follow me around, Cass. 
I'm spinning the, I'm, I'm moving the machine around here. I'm holding on to it with the, at the left hand bar with two fingers. Um, and it takes no muscle whatsoever to turn the machine. Uh, the wheels spin independently of, each, independently of each other and it's a snap, okay? If the tiller was on here, of course, it would take a little muscle just to keep the tiller up off the ground, but not to turn it. You know, it just turns wonderfully like that. Now, when you have a differential, what if you're in deeper soil and you need extra traction? No problem. You pull this lever back and it locks in the differential. At this point, it's now locked in. If I want to turn the machine, I can. But just like any other straight axle machine, I've got to drag it around. Note the wheels, they're not spinning at all. They're locked together. So it makes it much harder to turn, okay? So that's the differential. Some other controls that we have. Um, you can see this handlebar here? Okay, so we've got this safety lever or operator presence control, dead man switch, called different things. Bottom line is the machine's not going to run unless this lever is held down like this. Um, how do you start the machine if the lever's up and you can't stand here and, and hold it to start it? Well, you pull the clutch lever, this being the clutch lever. First bring this down, pull the clutch lever up, lock it into place, and then there you go. So when you're working, your hand's always going to be right here holding this down. If the machine's running and you're tilling, mowing, whatever you're doing, you let off this, it's going to kill the machine, kill the engine. Uh, it works differently depending on the model. On the BCS side, some of the models, when you let off this, it just stops the machine instantly and the engine stays running. Those are what they refer to as their power safe models. On the non power safe models, it stops the spark on the gas engine and then the machine slowly comes to a stop once the engine dies. Okay, so uh, looking at some of the other controls. This is our clutch. Okay? You able to see that okay? Okay. Um, you have, in order to perform certain functions on your walk behind tractor, you've got to utilize your clutch. Okay? Such as these functions would be changing your ground speeds. I'll get a closer um, shot of that in a moment. But we have three ground speeds on this particular model. Some have uh, two working speeds, some have three working speeds, some have four total speeds. Um, just depends. If you want to shift gears with this machine running, change ground speeds, you've got to use your clutch. You pull your clutch lever in, change gears, get into the gear you want, and ease your clutch back out and, and take off and do your work. If you want to engage your PTO, so this lever being ground speeds, we've got a PTO lever over here. If you want to engage your PTO, you've got to use your clutch. So. To engage the clutch, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you would push this toward the engine. Okay, you cannot a lot. Of, oftentimes, you can't do it without the machine running. Um, so, but it pushes toward the engine, and you'd let your clutch out, and PTO starts spinning. If a tiller was on there, uh, your times are going to start moving. Okay. So, some other controls we have here. Tilt it up. Actually, I'm going to put this block under it right quick. So we've got height adjustment right here, okay? VCS has seven different positions for height adjustment. This tractor just came out of the box and we haven't fully set it up, so it's a little bit tight. Uh, but when we set them up, send them to our customers, it works pretty smooth. So since there's no implement, the tractor's wanting to come down a little bit. But you've got a number of different positions. From here, you can see a wide range of, of up and down positions on the handlebars. That's pretty nice. So it's, that works very similar on Grillo as well. They have a, a height adjuster here in, uh, in the same place, although they have uh, four positions as opposed to seven. Uh, okay, moving around. This, so we talked about the differential earlier. This does not need clutch. You can use it at any time. Unless you need extra traction, you're generally going to leave it in this position here at almost all the time, which is unlocked, this being locked. Okay, forward and reverse right here, okay? This is the third control you must utilize your clutch for uh, when you want to interact with it. So this is forward position when our handlebars are here and we're tilling or doing anything in the rear mount, we call it. This is reverse, okay? Uh, when you rotate the handlebars around, which I'll show in a moment, this, it's the opposite. Okay, on this particular tractor and on all the BCS tractors that we sell. Um, 
reverse, and then forward. So you utilize the, you might utilize the clutch when doing this. You're going to get a bunch of grinding with your gears. Okay, moving, continuing to move around. This is our throttle engine speed. Okay, pretty straightforward. This is idle. Moving it up increases our RPMs. Uh, we also have a handlebar offset. Okay, to offset the handlebars, we grab this lever and offset left and offset to the right. Okay, it's pretty easy. Um, works similarly on a Grillo machine, they have the same thing. Um, certain Grillo models have a differential, just as the BCS. The, the, uh, the, there's, the control levers on some of their models are a little bit different. Uh, the G110 is similar to this with similar type of controls. The, the smaller machines, GD5 to 107s, have control rods uh, to interact to. Uh, well, no, actually, the differential doesn't. It has a lever. Um, but the forward and reverse is via a control rod as opposed to a, a lever like this. So these walkline tractors, you can run front and rear mount implements. So you could run tillers, any, uh, power heroes, soil working implements, a rear mount, which is how it is now. Well, what about if you want to run lawnmowers, snow throwers, uh, hay balers, hay rakes, uh, things like this? You run them in the same place. They get hooked in the same place, but we, call, we, we turn the handlebars around 180 degrees and run it in front mount, we'll call it, or mowing position. So let's take a look at that right quick. So here's how we do that on this machine. One thing right quick. So note, we've got some fancy looking cool plastic on this BCS machine. It looks great, okay? Well, nothing wrong with running it on your tractor. It looks super cool. I find that it annoys me uh, from a usability standpoint. So uh, especially when rotating handlebars, I like to see the cables I don't want cables getting pinched or bound when I rotate the handlebars. So I never run any tractor, at least my personal tractors, with the plastic on. Nothing wrong with doing that. That's personal preference. So do it how you like. And that would be Grillo or BCS. It's just not a knock on BCS. Grillo has a piece of green plastic that looks pretty cool too. I take it off as well on, on, on my machines. This doesn't really matter. This is just a little cover over the... Um, basically where the clutch fork is, goes into the top of the transmission, that does not really get in the way. No real reason to pull that off if one doesn't want to. Okay, so going from rear mount to front mount. Here's how we would do it on BCS. You've got your two control rods. These must be removed first. Pop one control rod out, pop the other control rod out. Grab the lever right here and then rotate it around. It's only going to rotate around one way which would be like this. So while I'm holding this down the whole while, rotating my handlebars all the way around. When I do that, if I feel any binding of any kind, I stop and take a look and check my cables. Notice we've got a whole bunch of cables in here, and they've got to kind of fall into the right position, which they, they usually do. It's, uh... So, if we had a mower in here, or a snow thrower, or a hay baler, or whatever, this is how we would run it. So, so it's super easy to convert from front mount to rear mount, or chilling to mowing position. Uh, the, on the Grillo machine, it works very similar. Uh, one difference would be you have some control, the control rods here, you take, uh, you pop a couple pins off down here, it takes a couple minutes longer. Um, but same thing. So, all right, let's go back to, well, one thing to note. So when you do do this, and you have rotated your handlebars around, specifically on this model and all BCS models that we sell, once you do that, what was your forward now becomes your reverse, and what was your, and vice versa, and reverse becomes forward. So this would now be forward from this position, and this would be reverse because we are on the other side of the machine. Okay, uh, there is one machine out there, the Gorilla G110, that inverts and changes and physically moves the linkage when you rotate the handlebars. In that case, forward is forward and reverse is reverse, no matter what side you're on. But that's um, off the top of my head, that's just the G110 that's doing that. Older BCS machines did it, 850s, 830s, um, I think 605s and 737s, uh, just off the top of my head. But in any event, not a big deal. It's easy to remember that, okay? I'm going to go ahead and rotate the handlebars back. Anything else I should mention? Oh, let's take a look at the wheels right quick. I'm just kind of, this is just trying to be a high level overview of walk behind tractor. All right, so these particular, we can put on all kind of different size 
Different style tires, wheels, steel wheels, there's a wide variety. These are 4 by 10 by 18 inches tall. Um, you know, these are much taller than just about any American type of tiller out there by far. Um, on the bigger size tractors, they usually, the 732 with its the bigger stock engine comes with the next size up, which is 5 by 10 by 20 inch tall. Alright, so, but something I wanted to mention about these, these are adjustable rims. We can move these wheels out if we want. Uh, it gives it a little bit more um, stability and balance, or if we were running the rotary plow, we want to do that to get a, 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 a wider width. So notice there's an inner rim here. With the tire off, you can just essentially unbolt your inner rim, and it can be flipped two ways to, to bolt onto this inner set of brackets or this outer set. That's how you can adjust your wheels out, so um, FYI on that. So, all right, so engine options. So these are all um, high-quality industrial commercial engines on these machines. Um, this particular one has the Subaru engine on it, this EX series, uh, which you can get on the BCS 710. Um, the same engine also comes stock with the SP um, series, which is a, a great down, but any, anyways, um, uh, it's just a smaller engine and it's from a different series that's on the, the least expensive BCS machine. Uh, most of the machines end up coming with Hondas, uh, in most cases, which are awesome, the GX series engines and then Yamahas on, uh, on the Grillos, no Yamaha on BCS. Um, I like all the, all the above. I really like Yamaha engines or like Honda and even the Subarus that we've been using more recently. Um, I like those as well. Um, Subaru claims on their EX series, they've got five year warranty uh, on those where the other uh, brands have three. So you, I really don't think you can go wrong with any of the, uh, with any of the engines for the most part. I mean, well, Yamaha, Honda, and Kohler. I mean, Yamaha, Honda, and uh, Subaru. Uh, one other thing to note, bumper, uh, depending on the implement, for just telling you probably don't need it, but what we normally do, and when you start running more implements, uh, especially a power hair or something like that, this fancy piece of plastic comes off, looks nice. Uh, don't have to take it off, just for the heck of it, but we take it off because we mount weights on here oftentimes, depending on what implement we're running. You can mount suitcase weight, you can bolt on some weights, you can do a J bolt and barbells um, to balance out the implement so it's um, um, easier on the body, easier at the end of your rows to make turns. Um, that's basically a high level overview on the walk behind tractor. I will say one thing about the clutch, um, for those not familiar with the machines, the BCS clutch lever is easier to pull than it is on the Grillo. Um, specifically on the, um, not including the G110. The G110 clutch on the Grillo works, works differently. The lever is quite a bit different than, um, than the clutch lever on any other Grillos and the BCS machines. But, so if you had any, you know, strength problems in your hand, um, the BCS clutch, because it has a pulley up underneath, uh, over on top of the transmission here, that that uh, decreases the amount of muscle you need to pull your clutch. So just FYI on that. Anything else you ask? What should I mention? Oh, and is it still going? All right. Alan, keep, you know, keep in mind, depending on the model, the walk behind tractor, you can run 40 plus different implements. So you can do a whole lot with them. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't really mention it, but you know, the, the, the idea of one tractor, one engine to power all of your um, power equipment needs um, is a really nice thing. That means instead of having five, seven, eight pieces of standalone equipment to change oil and deal with fuel issues and whatnot, you have one. So a whole lot nicer. And then on top of that, it's really high end um, and durable agricultural grade equipment meant to last a long time. So uh, either way you go, BCS or Grillo, you will be you will be very happy with the equipment. Um, I, I use it personally, both brands. I own both brands personally, and, and I really enjoy them. So I'm happy to answer any questions. If anybody has any questions, shoot me an email, give me a call. Uh, Fault Behind Trappers is what we do. Thanks for watching.